Hello and welcome to this video where we are going to be taking a look at the new Minecraft snapshot 19w02a. Welcome to this series where we are taking a look at the new snapshots for Minecraft and taking a look at what they contain. Let's get started with this one and the first thing we're going to be looking at is the new loading screen they have added. They should have added a new animated loading screen. I have not seen it yet, so let's create a new testing world and see how things are going. Oh. Oh. What's this? Looks like it's generating stuff. I'm guessing that's the spawn area. That doesn't look too bad. I'm not sure what it means, but um, well, there we go. Pretty cool. I think that was a bit bare, but um, yeah, it's not it's not too bad, and for some reason I'm in survival mode. Great for testing. But anyways, with all that out of the way, let's get started with the new changes they have added into the game. Or actually, they have added quite a few things. The first thing being a campfire. Yeah, they have added a campfire. And that is actually really interesting, and I think it is a great addition to Minecraft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to craft one and how they work. So first of all, you need any sort of wood, any wood, doesn't matter, stripped, log, doesn't matter, doesn't matter what kind of wood, it doesn't matter at all. You can use coal or charcoal and then you need sticks, you need three. I'm just going to take a few here to show you the different recipes here. So I'm going to place some planks, place these three sticks there and take a charcoal. All right, so I made a mistake there. Apparently you cannot use planks because when I use these logs here, you see it comes there. And when I use these, it also comes. So apparently you can't use the planks for some reason. So on the wiki it says um, any wood, but oh well, I guess that doesn't count. I guess I misunderstood. But anyways, there we go, campfire, boom. You can also make it with coal, just like this. Add coal instead. The wood down here doesn't matter. Um, planks apparently doesn't work. And there we go, a fire. Boom. Also, because of the fire, they have added new smoke particles, which should be able to be seen further away than normal particles, which is actually really cool. It can cook up to four food items, but it is on the other hand, three times slower than a furnace. And also listen to that. It sounds so cozy. Let's see the light level. Time, set, night. No, oh, my gamma is up. There we go. That shows it a lot better. And I really like these smoke particles, but something you can do. Um, you can place a hay bale under it and it should produce some other smoke particles. I think. Some that should be different and it should be longer lasting and should reach higher up than the normal ones. So let's take a look here. As you can see, those are disappearing a lot faster than those. Those are reaching all the way up there. Those are starting to disappear at the moon. The other one is way far up. So if we go to the mountain over here and just stand on top of it, we should be able to see that smoke from a pretty good distance away. Even if we went all the way over here. And I'm guessing as long as the chunk is loaded, we will be able to see that smoke, unlike with a torch. You cannot see a torch smoke from all this way over. And as you can see, I'm right at the edge where that is not visible anymore. And I can just barely still see the smoke. So that can be very useful um, to place, I guess, at key locations that just let it burn and kind of make it to use it to guide your way throughout the Minecraft world by placing a hay bale underneath it. But you can also cook food on this. All right, so now with daytime, uh, the campfire can cook up to four different items at once. So as you can see there, we have four pork chops cooking. It will cook um, three times slower than a normal furnace. And they should pop off, the food should just pop off whenever it is ready. Now also something that is really cool with the campfire we just place one here and we take a flint and steel and place it over here, as you may know or may not know, the normal fire will burn the item away. 
but this fire does not. And also this fire spreads, this fire does not. And as you can see, those pork chops are now ready, so now they're just laying on the ground there, and those will start popping off as well right there. So that is pretty cool right there. Get out of here, you're disturbing. There we go. Okay, uh, so there you go. You will take a bit of damage walking on it, so so you'll take one heart, one half a heart of damage. So if I keep standing on it, I will keep taking half a heart damage. And get away, Zabi. Get away. Now, if you were to crouch on it, you will not take any f um, fire damage. Just like the magma block. So that is pretty cool. But as soon as I let go of my shift key, I immediately start taking damage. So that is something really cool. Um, you can definitely do with a nice fireplace in a house, for example. Especially because the fire does start... Um, spread and it is ex especially especially cool because you can now make actual chimneys with this thing which i think is amazing a feature that has been lacking quite a lot like i can see that someone is actually in the house now you can actually extinguish the fire with a water bucket so i do not believe you can use a water bottle let's try no you cannot you use a water bucket and just like that it is the fire is then put out uh oh boy i think i think i messed up by being in creative mode oh boy let's try that again but if you were to extinguish a fire and you want to relight it use flint and steel and boom let me just get into game mode survival again okay so it does that that's a bit annoying i think i think it should just put it out but i guess it kind of makes sense you pour the water on it but yes you can use the flint and steel you cannot oh man you know what? That's it. Monsters. Be gone. Phew. You cannot use a fire charge to turn on the fireplace. You need to use a flint and steel for it to work. Also, the light this campfire produces is a light level of 9, like we saw earlier. Also, extinguishing a fire pops off any food item on it, but the item can then not be picked up. So if we just gonna try that for a second here, I wanna see this in person. So if we have some food going here, we're cooking food and oh boy, now we just did that. And I cannot pick up the food for some reason. I don't know if that's a bug also. There's, I think, way more than I put on there actually. I'm guessing that's a bug. I don't think it should be able to do that. Just place another one here. We're cooking some pork chops, and now we're whoopsie daisy. Yeah, that's that's way more than it should have um than it should have dropped off. So I think that's a bug right there. So I'm not sure how this is going to function, but um yeah, I I can't really say much more about that part. Also, a quick side note: you can only use flint steel to turn on the fire. No other fire source is available to light up the fire again. The next thing I really want to quickly just get out of the way is a new command they added. Um, or actually I don't know if it's a new command added, but it's a, um, I think it's a new command added. So um, I did not know this was here, but apparently you can make a team. So if I'm gonna add a team real quick, um, like that, and then like that, I don't know. Create a team. Okay, good. So now I can do team message. Then my message. Hello, team. You must be on a team. Okay, so team and then join binary warriors. Now I have been added to binary warriors team. So now I can do team message. Hello, warriors. And then I'm saying to my team. And then I guess in multiplayer, it's only the people in that team that are able to see that message. The message is of course available to all the players in the team. You can also do slash TM and then hello. That's another way to do it. You don't have to write team MSG. Um, you can also just click on the team name. Actually, no, sorry, the team name. Let's do that again, team name. And then it just pops the command in there. And you can go ahead and say hello again. So that is pretty cool.
And just before we completely walk away from the campfire and the smoke, they added two new particles, the campfire cozy smoke and the campfire signal smoke. I believe this is the signal smoke because it comes up so high, and the other smoke is the other one where you don't have a hay bale underneath it. So those two particles have been added. And then they have added some new statistics. They have added four new ones. Interactions with blast furnace, interactions with campfire, interactions with lectern, and interactions with smoker. You can find those in here, and you can find all the other statistics, jumps, and etc, etc. And if you just go down, interactions with campfire, as you can see, I've interacted with it 16 times. Um, interactions with lectern, zero, we will come to that in a moment. And furnace, etc, etc, you can find all those there so that is pretty cool as well and then a quick note to the render animation thing we saw when the world got created um, on the wiki it says visualizes render of the spawn chunks um, i didn't really understand what it was trying to look like but still it's i guess kind of cool to see some sort of progress bar now we come to some very interesting changes the cartography table and the lectern now has a use and also a crafting recipe. Let's take a look at the cartography table. So, how to craft the cartography table? Well, first, I actually don't think you need a crafting table. Let's try without first. Uh, so we need two paper and, from my understanding, any sort of planks. So we can mix and match these around a bit. So if I just go into game mode, survival, if I can spell, um, I just put two planks and two paper, boom, cartography table. I can then mix and match these as I wish, just like that, and we get a cartography table. Cool, I didn't even need the crafting table, get out of here. <laughs> so it also now has a UI, um, and the cartography table's function allows for cloning, extending, and locking of maps. Um, so if I have a map, let's just get a map real quick here. So here I have an empty map, I'm just gonna activate it. Boom, there we go. And we put it in here, we can see this over here. Now, the way you can lock it, and I believe the locking prevents it from being zoomed in or out. Or out. And it says here, maps that have been locked cannot be further explored nor cloned. So that is pretty cool. I don't know if you can then zoom in or out with it, but let's say I wanted to lock this, it shows a lock, and boom, locked. There we go. Now, if I just get another one, if I remember correctly, the way to... S okay, so you can copy it. But it says right here, it cannot be cloned. Which I don't understand. I just cloned it. I'm afraid I don't get that part. But let's take some paper, because I believe the way you... Let's just get another one. The way you zoom out a map is to add another paper. So you kind of make the map bigger. So now when I take it, there's only a little bit of the area explored. I need to go ahead and explore the rest of it to get a bigger map. So that is pretty cool right there. So you use paper and I'm guessing then the normal recipe in the crafting table have been just removed. Yes, so before I believe you did that to scale the, the map up, but not any longer. So that is pretty cool. You now have to use the specific cartography table to do all of that good stuff. Now it says zooming in, and I don't know how you zoom in on a map. If I wanted to zoom in on this one, I don't actually know how to do that. I can't see on the wiki it says how to do it. So yeah, but you should be able to anyway. But that's pretty cool. You can then lock it if you wished. Too. So if I were, let's just test if this actually works as it should. <laughs> so let's get that, and we now want to lock it. Boom, locked. So now I should not be able to explore any more of the map, which works. Though I were able to clone it before, which is kind of weird, but oh well, I guess bugs happens, right? So that's a cartography table. Again, those can be found in villages. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the lectern. All right, so to craft the lectern, you basically need four of any slabs. I got four different types of slabs here just to show you, and a bookshelf, and you got a lectern. You don't need any specific uh, wooden slab, just any wooden slab. And you place it 
there you go. Now, the way you use this is you add a book to it. And I do not, yeah, normal books doesn't work, obviously. So we can place a book right there. So that is pretty cool. And this is now available for all multiple players to read. So if I'm standing here with a friend, um, let's just get a friend real quick here. Let's get a friend. Uh, he's standing here. We've got another one standing here. And then I, I'm standing here and we're both, all three of us are looking at the same book and can read it. Now we cannot write anything in there. I can take the book and I can place it, but we cannot write in there. All right, I'm back. The game crashed for some strange reason. But from what I can see, the only way to take a book is clicking on take book. So if I were to read something here, hello world, what a nice day it is today. There we go, done. I can now put it in here and boom, we can all read it and you can read multiple pages. Now, the cool thing is when the lectern is holding a book, it re emits a redstone signal. So if we just get a redstone dust here and a comparator and a redstone repeater, and we should see, hmm, interesting. Ah, sorry, I misunderstood that. Um, Lexus holding a book, book will emit a redstone pulse when a page is turned. So if I'm just quickly gonna take this book and I'm gonna flip the page and just have a whole bunch of junk in there and maybe page three, blah, blah, blah. And okay, done, I'm done with my book. Let's place it in here. And then you see, it quickly emits a redstone signal. It also says on the weekend, I don't completely understand this. A redstone comparator will also record book reading and send a signal depending on how many pages have been read. So let's just try this just for the fun of it. So, uh, record mode. Um, let's just take a look here. Yeah, I, I don't know how this works. Oh, wait a second. Okay, so, oh, wait. Extend this a bit. Let's make sure we can see everything. There we go. Okay, so then it extended the redstone quite a bit. And I'm guessing when you're on maybe the final page, it goes the 15 redstone blocks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, so I guess when you're on the final page, it reaches the 15 redstone. Um, the 15 redstone length. But that is pretty cool and pretty much all about the lectern. I don't think it has other um, features. I don't believe it can hold enchanted books. That would be a bit weird. So that is pretty cool. And the lectern now finally has a functionality as well as the cartographer, cat, 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 cartographer table. <laughs> now finally has a use. So that is pretty cool as well. And then finally, we are done down to the fixes. Um, from released versions before 1.14, there are eight um, issues fixed. And from the 1.14 development versions, there are 13 issues fixed. And from the previous development version, there are nine issues fixed. And that pretty much sums up this snapshot. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope you understood everything. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. And uh, yeah, I hope you are enjoying this snapshot. I really am and I'm really excited to see what else Mojang has to offer. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment and share it with your friends. And if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe. Feel free to join my Discord server as well. Link down below. Follow, follow me on Twitter and Twitch. And I hope to see you next time. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Wait. Bye bye. Wait. Bye bye. This is so cool. I can't wait to build a house with this. <laughs> That's gonna be so awesome.